with you. I've got a statics problem today and today I'm going to talk about something called the method of joints. Now when you're doing statics problems a lot of times what you're working with is pin jointed trusses. Something like this. Sometimes more complicated than this. When you're dealing with pin jointed trusses there's really two ways to go about solving them. One is the method of joints and the other one is called uh, method of sections. Now to start when I say solving a problem what exactly does that mean? Well it means starting with some mathematical description of your truss, the geometry and the forces acting on it from the outside, and then to analyze it, to solve it, means to find forces internal to the truss, find forces acting at the joints, and find forces in the elements. That's what structural analysis really means. Because in the, in the end, what we're really trying to figure out is, will this thing break? So we can't figure that out unless we know what forces are present, what internal forces are present on the truss. That's what structural analysis is, at least at this level. So I'm going to use GFSA format, just like I always do. But given, find, solution, and at the end I'm going to write answer. So it's GFSA. All right, so given, I've got the geometry of this very simple truss here. It's only got one internal joint, and I've got all the angles here. Notice I don't have any dimensions on there. Turns out we don't need them. Um, the other thing I've done is I've identified all the joints and all the bars in the truss. Now, the, the uh, method I've, I've used when I'm uh, giving these things names is when uh, I've got a joint, I'll give it a number and draw a circle around it, because that kind of seems to hint joint to me. And uh, when I've got a bar here, I'll draw it, write a number down, and I'll put a little uh, line underneath it, put a bar underneath it. So that's bar one, that's joint one, and so on. To me, that makes sense. I hope it makes sense to you, too. And in order for the fine part of it to work, I've got to, I'm trying to find forces in some, some joint or some element. Well, this problem is find the force in element four. That's the fine part of it. Once I've figured out that number, I know I'm done. Now, solution. Well, there's two ways you could do this, method of sections and method of joints. Method of sections is basically to cut out part of the truss and figure out what forces are acting around the uh, uh, edges of that envelope or that, that structure that you've cut out and assume that everything inside that boundary is rigid. And that works pretty well. Um, the method of joints goes at it from another direction. That's to start at one joint, figure out the forces of the bars acting on that joint, and then move to the next one, and then move to the next one, and move to the next one. And the nice part about method of joints, number one, it's really easy to explain. It's really easy to apply. Um, the downside is sometimes you wind up solving for a lot of numbers you don't necessarily care about in order to get to the one you do care about. And I purposely set this one up, so I want to know what's going on in that bar right there. But method of joints would require me to start here and start working back that way. So we'll actually find some forces there that we don't necessarily care about. That's all right. In a later video, I'll solve this same problem using method of sections so you can see how the two would compare. So solve, whoops, I guess I can write this. I'll just write method of joints so we, just for completeness here. Okay, so that's the background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a uh, free body diagram of joint two. All right, always start with a free body diagram. If you're not doing a free body diagram, something's wrong. Okay, there are very few times in, this, in the world of statics or strength of materials or dynamics where you shouldn't be doing a free body diagram somewhere. And I'm not about to violate that rule now. All right, now I need to know what the forces are in bar four and bar three. Now, just as a guess, I'm going to guess that bar, let's uh, say bar four, I'm at bar one. But I want, I'm going to guess that bar one is in tension, and I'm going to guess that bar three is in compression. That yeah, seems like a reasonable guess. Um, if I'm wrong, all that's going to happen is when I calculate forces, they're going to have a negative sign in front of them. So the math will tell me whether I've guessed right or not, and it'll take care of it. So I don't need to worry. All right, so I'm going to guess that force one is going that way, and I'm going to guess that force three is going that way. All right, and there's a 30 degree angle there. And there's, of course, going to be a 60 degree angle there. So there's free body diagram of joint two. So how do I do this? Well, since a, we're acting at a point, there can't be any moments because there's no arm here. I'm acting at a point, there's no distance, therefore no moment. There's only uh, X forces and Y forces, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those equal to zero. Now, also got to have a coordinate system. And here's 
my standard positive coordinate system. I put moment in there just for completeness, but we're not actually going to use it. All right. So the sum of the x forces has to be zero. Remember, the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be zero, or the structure's moving. I'm pretty sure I don't want this moving. Okay? These anchors over here, these, these uh, indicate that this uh, truss is connected to something massive and rigid that isn't going to move. Those indicate a wall there. All right. So anyway, let's, let's do this here. Well, if I want, I can... Uh, go through a step here, I can call that F1, I can call this F3X and F3Y and 1000. Okay, if I want to go this extra step, I can. These are just the vector components of those forces. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Um, if this helps you keep track of what's going on, then by all means do it. What you're going to find out is statics is as much a bookkeeping exercise as it is anything else. So I'm going to say F3x minus F1 equals 0. Okay, I guess that 0 is kind of redundant. Let's leave that out. Okay, and F3x is just going to be F3 cosine, let's see, 30 degrees, right? Okay, minus F1 equals 0. All right, and I've got, let's see, two equations, I'm sorry, two unknowns and one equation. Yeah, it doesn't help. All right, so I clearly I'm going to need the other equation here, and that's going to be F3y positive minus 1,000 newtons. Okay, now I've got uh, one equation and one unknown down here. That's good. I'm going to be able to solve for F3 because F3y is F3 sine 30 degrees minus 1,000 newtons. So I'm going to find out here in a second that F3, make sure I get this right, don't write it down wrong, is 2,000 newtons. Okay. Now intermediate answers, I'm going to put an underline there. So I now know that F3 is 2,000 newtons and that's in compression. Okay, Because that's what I assumed here. If this part is in compression, it's pushing that way on that joint. So I've got a number there, that's good. Now, do I care what's going on in, in uh, bar one? I really don't. I'm trying to get down to here, so I'm going to just stop right there. Although, if you want to uh, calculate it out, you'll find that F1 equals uh, 1732.051 newtons. Now, normally, I wouldn't go to that many significant figures, but if you're doing this on your calculator, that's what you're going to get. I normally tell my students to calculate to five significant figures and report the answers to three. All right. And uh, so if I did that, I would be to one. Okay, that's the five significant figures. So there we go. We've got that answer. The next thing I want to do now is I want to uh, go down to the next joint, which is number three. And if I solve for the forces at joint three, I'm going to get the force in beam four. That's what I want. So just to clear out some space on my little board here, I'm going to do this. All right. Okay. So looking for the forces on joint four, let's or joint three, I should say. I told you it was as much a bookkeeping exercise as it is anything else. Okay, so let's do this. I know that F3, which is 2,000 newtons, is coming in there from that direction. And just to be clear, that's 30 degrees. Okay, there's that. Um, let's see. If this is in compression, I'm betting that is too. So that's going to be F4 coming in from that direction. And these two line up with each other exactly. Hmm. That means those two will cancel each other out. Makes me think that F2 coming in here, F2 might be zero. It about half to be if those two are going to be equal and opposite. Well, but let's see what the math tells us. All right, so let's sum the forces in the x direction. That has to be zero. Okay, so if that's zero, then uh, I've got, let's see, F2 cosine 30 degrees, because this is, it's 60 degrees between those two, but that's 30 degrees, and that's 30 degrees, so I'm, I'm okay there. So F2 cosine 30 degrees is that one, plus F4 cosine 30 degrees, all right? 
and we're running out of the board here, minus F3 cosine 30 degrees, all has to be zero. All right? So some of the forces in the y direction also has to be zero. Well, that's going to be minus F2 sine 30 degrees, because I want the, the vertical component of F2, and the vertical component is going to point down, all right, plus F4 sine 30 degrees. That's the vertical component there, and that's going to point up, minus that, so that's the vertical component of F3, so that's F3. Uh, let's see, that's also going to be sine 30 degrees, and that has to be zero. If I work all those numbers out, I'm going to find out that F2 is indeed zero, just like we figured. You know, the intuition says it's probably zero. Well, the math agrees with me. That's good, all right? Uh, gives, gives me confidence in the resulting solution. And just to make sure I know what I'm doing here, uh, I'll check my notes. For F4 is 2,000 newtons, all right? Well, that's also pretty encouraging because if that was zero and that was 2,000 newtons, that had to be 2,000 newtons. There's no other way this could have worked out. So my intuition suggests that that's probably zero, and if that's 2,000, that has to be. I think that's the right answer, but I'm not sure. Well, the math tells me that's the right answer. So good deal. So the last thing I'll do here is I'll put, make sure this is in frame. Yeah, there we go. Equals 2,000 newtons. And draw a little box around it. So there we go. There's, make sure I got that, yes. Make, that's the solution using the method of joints. Next time we'll use the method of sections and we'll solve the same problem. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.